So in this final episode of presenting Polaroids, I'm going to look at a, a hybrid approach that lies somewhere between somewhere between an album and a frame print hung on a wall. Now, a portfolio box is basically just a set of matted prints stored in a presentation box. It's an approach you might use for a set of uh, curated prints that hang together thematically, or they might be uh, just a collection of outstanding Polaroids that you've taken over a period of time. But unlike hanging a few frame prints on a wall, and let's face it, finding a good amount of wall space can be difficult, showing matted prints in a box allows a viewer just to sit down and to browse an entire series of photographs. And compared to an album, for example, viewing a set of SX-70 prints highlighted in a white mat conveys a sense of value that you, as the photographer, place on your images. And if you are pursuing gallery shows, Showing a box portfolio of your Polaroids set in clean white mats is an expression of your professionalism that you are serious about your craft. Now, I chose a portfolio box approach for my Cam Morton series of black and white SX-70 photographs. It just seemed clear that each photograph needed the space of a broad white window mat to look its best. Now, for this series, I selected 41 images to be included, which, once matted, managed to fill uh, two portfolio boxes, one that was one and a half inches deep and the other that was three inches deep. So anyways, that's what it's all about. Now let's take a look at how to do it. As I've mentioned before, matting and framing photographs is hardly a novel presentation technique. And I've put together my own matting tutorial, which you can view on my presenting Polaroids framing the image video. So following the same methodology of using pre-cut mats and backing boards, I was able to efficiently mat the 41 images in my Camp Morton series in about two days for the cost that really didn't break the bank. Now pop those matted photos into an attractive archival storage box and I have a portfolio that presents my photographs to their best, looks professional, and as a bonus help, will help preserve them for a, a very long time. So here's what you need to build your own boxed portfolio. Now it all starts with an archival storage box. Uh, typically these are designed for archival storage of artifacts in a museum or gallery storage room. And usually they're made with a, a gray or a tan board. This is the gray example. And you can see that they have black metal corner joints. However, I've found that the, the black board versions are very presentable and really quite affordable. And you can see all the black corner joints now blend in and are certainly not very obvious at all. Now, if you want to, of course, you can take a step up and go to the presentation box level, which uh, typically have nicer cloth coverings, uh, but they also cost a lot more. Now, for my boxes, I've just stuck with my archival storage boxes, and I've also stuck with the 8 by 10 inch size, which I've used for a lot of my matting examples in previous presenting Polaroid videos. And I find that the 8x10 size is pretty good with Polaroids because it provides a nice white matted area around my Polaroids without being too large. Now there's several sources for black storage boxes. Um, I'm using the Archival Methods 85 by 105 inch black drop front boxes and they're made with Archival Box Board. Um, they come in two depths. One is the 1.5 inch and there's also a 3, and a, uh, or sorry, a three inch depth. Now you can find similar products uh, from companies such as Linical, who have an 8x10 inch black drop front archival box, and also uh, Light Impressions, which has a black true core drop front box. And then if you're in Canada, you can go to Car McLean, which has the Carmack black drop front boxes. And again, they're all relatively similar in their construction and their in their appearance. So this is the archival, as I mentioned, the archival methods approach. Now, in terms of matting photographs, I would suggest you see my presenting Polaroids framing the image video instructions for matting SX-70 photographs. Now, for this particular approach, I'm using uh, 8 by 10 inch 2-ply acid-free conservation mat board for the backing. Uh, that's what you mount your um, SX-70 pictures to with photo corners. And then for the window mat, I use an 8 by 10 inch 4-ply acid-free conservation mat board. And the window, of course, is cut to fit the image area of the SX-70 pictures. And just to recap uh, the dimensions I use, uh, my window width is 3 and 1 8 inches. 
my window height is three and a quarter inches. The top of the mat is about two and three quarter inches and the mod bottom of the mat is about four inches. And of course you can adjust these to suit your own tastes. Now in terms of the sources for, for custom mat boards, um, there's various sources I've mentioned before. One is Archival Methods. Uh, they will do four ply custom mats with rectangular round windows and they will also be able to supply a two ply backing board. Now they will also assemble a four two ply mounting board and a four ply uh, window mat with linen tape and they'll do all that at no additional charge so that might be a, a worthwhile reason for going to Archival Methods. Now, if you're in Canada, you can go to uh, Mat Shop Canada and they do four ply custom mats with rectangular windows, or you can go to Custom Mat Canada, which does four ply, ply mats with round or rectangular windows. Now, neither of those, unfortunately, uh, will carry two ply mat board for your backing. So that's a little bit of a problem. Now, as I mentioned, archival storage boxes are usually available in one and a half inch and three inch steps. And I found that the one and a half inch deep boxes can comfortably hold about 10 SX-70s that are matted with a four ply window mat and a two ply backing board. And the three inch versions can, well they can comfortably hold about 21 to 22 pictures. So that's how to do it in a nutshell. And now I'd just like to take you on a quick tour of my Camp Morton portfolio. Now, Camp Morton is situated on the western shores of Lake Winnipeg in Manitoba's Interlake region. It was established as a fresh air or a summer camp by the Roman Catholic Church in 1929, a place for disadvantaged youth from the nearby city of Winnipeg to experience a more natural lakeside environment. The camp has long since ceased operation and it's now just a provincial, not just, but it is a provincial park. Uh, but the remnants of the old summer camp uh, still exist, albeit in various stages of disrepair. I've visited Camp Morton Provincial Park many times over the years, but it took a recent walk along the lakeshore for me to, I guess, finally take notice of the remnants of the concrete steps, retaining walls and foundations that over the years have slowly slipped down the steep eroding banks and onto the beach. Now there, there are elements still identifiable as stairs and walls, but in many cases the concrete is so eroded by the summer waves and winter ice of Lake Winnipeg, I mean the lake completely freezes over in winter, that any of these items are nearly indistinguishable from the surrounding rocks and boulders. They've almost become as one. And I was struck by these pieces of concrete transformed by nature back into a more natural state now less a part of the human world and more a part of the natural world. I find it touching that this summer camp whose purpose was to reacquaint youth with the natural order was now being reclaimed, however slowly, by nature itself. Which led me to my series of Polaroids exploring the extent and progress of this transformation across the entire Camp Morton site. So as I mentioned, this is the last episode in my presenting Polaroid series, at least the last planned episode. So maybe in the future I'll be doing something for the, but for the time being, I think this is pretty much it. And what I'm hoping is that you are getting something out of this that will, will allow you to maybe explore new ideas for presenting your Polaroids. I think the one takeaway from this entire series is that there's a certain versatility when you mount your SX-70 pictures using archival photo corners on whatever backing you might choose. Uh, for example, if we take a look at the album my, uh, that I did for From Our Windows project, I can take a picture from here, slip it out of the archival photo corners, and I could mount it in, for example, my framing the icon type of a frame approach, or I could put it behind a mat, such as this approach. Uh, just take this photograph out slip it out of its archival corners and put the photograph from the album into that album, into that frame anyways. Or I could also take one of my matted portfolio prints and either take the entire matted, matted photograph and slip it into one of my eight by 10 inch frames. Or I can just take one of my SX-70 photographs out of the mat in my portfolio box presentation and slip it into the photo corners of one of the mats that I've prepared for uh, 
one of my framed pictures. So there's a lot of versatility built in there. You can go a lot of different directions, change as you, as you see fit, uh, put pictures on the wall, put them in portfolio boxes, put them in albums. The choice is yours. So again, hope you got something useful out of this presentation. And in the meantime, uh, it's finally springtime here in, in Winnipeg, Manitoba. So I'm going to get out there and start taking some pictures. See you soon. Surprise, I'm back with a last minute Easter egg. Uh, I've shown you all the fancy ways of presenting your Polaroids. Now I'm going to go completely low tech and present a absolutely free way of presenting your Polaroids. First of all, you take one of your empty SX-70 uh, cartridges. You've got lots of these. You take them apart. You pull out the, the battery, of course, which of course you're going to recycle. Uh, try to recycle the black thing if you can, the back black case. You're left with this metal thing right here. What you do is you take, there's a little bit of a tab down here at the bottom. Uh, what you want to do is take the bottom part and bend it so it goes a little bit outwards, like that. A little bit further. Take the top part of this spring frame right here and you bend it so it's a little bit more flat. There we go. Take your Polaroid picture right here. Just slip it into that little tab there at the bottom. And there we have it.